Today we have a fun video about the evolution of the organ, or as I call it, the organ trail. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in downtown San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate your support. We love to interact with you. No piano fact today. Yeah, we, have we organ have, fact. We have you an got organ a piano fact. fact. Well, it's it's keyboard fact. What's inter yeah? What's interesting is you know when you think about organ. In my mind, I'm always like, you know, it's like the third setting on your digital on your digital <laughs> piano. It's on your keyboard. It's on your digital piano. You click, you know, there's pianos, electric pianos, and there's organs, and there's a plethora of organs. What, what comes to mind when, when someone says that, you know, organ to me is like, is that rhythm and blues, jazz, or uh, chapel, church, or cathedral? Yeah, because they have all the different ones, the yeah, settings. Yeah, in yeah that's, that's about it. There's five big organ sounds that, that, that you can get. And so... Today we are going to be talking about organs, but our piano fact, we like to start our, all our videos with a piano fact. Our piano fact for the day is when you switch to that organ setting on your keyboard, your keyboard is no longer a keyboard. It's a manual. And so when referring to an organ, if you've ever seen an organ before, um, there's sometimes one, one, you know, they call them manuals, but there's, there's one bed of keys um, somewhere between, you know, sometimes 40 notes all the way up to 60 notes, depending on the size. And then there's sometimes two. They're stacked on each other, sometimes three. There can be a lot of different they, keys. They call them that on harpsichords, too. Upper manual, lower manual. And, and so uh, so the, the manual. Well, it, that's, yeah. But it's funny you mentioned that on your digital piano when you pick that organ. The first thing that comes to mind for me is that there's no sustain pedal. So don't play the organ with the sustain pedal. Have you ever caught yourself doing that on a digital piano? I, I have because that's kind of how you play the piano. But what makes that jazz rhythm and blues that, you know, the, the Hammond it's organ choppy. sound is not having sustain. Yeah. It's uh, when so, you're playing it, the electricity is running through your fingers. And when you're not, it stops. It, it stops. So and, it's kind of interesting. And, uh, you know, what's also cool is where your, where your feet would be holding a pedal on an organ a lot of times has another set, another manual, a foot manual. Right. Um, and you're able to press the, the different keys and it looks like a piano at your feet. They actually have stop buttons that they can kick with their feet. They go in and out and you can change the sounds, the different bass sounds. And So we are talking about the history of the organ today. We thought it, if it's the third sound setting on a piano, on a lot of the pianos that we do, go and, uh, and check out. We've done the electric pianos in oh, the past. Oh, we talked about roads and clavinets and whirlies to death. We and really so, don't talk much about organs. And so we actually found a really cool piece of artwork here at the store, and it, uh, it is called The Evolution of the Organ. Yeah, and it's a, well, it looks like this. It was in a frame. And of all things, it was by um, uh, one of our repair techs in, uh, downstairs, and he actually has a B3, too. He's a great piano organ player, too. And so the um, organ... Is one of the oldest instruments. It really is. It's been around. It, it's before Common Era. It's you know I saw it anywhere from two hundred to three hundred years before it's Common right. Era is when they is when they say that the pipe or okay. sorry the the uh, the pan flute right. Okay. Yeah. So before we get into this, I do. This is what caused us to talk about organ because in the past we had talked about pipe organs and that gets into even battle history in Europe over over mm -hmm. organs that weren't made to order or, or as as promised. But here's the deal. I found this downstairs, and it says the evolution of the organ. And it's really a great thing of marketing material, but it's also, at the same time, a piece of propaganda. And I it's thought, biased. this is it's biased. So this is what, what we're going to do. We're going to start off exactly what, what you were saying. Pan pipes, the beginning of the organ. Mm -hmm. And so they come from shepherds that use pipes to try to entertain themselves, I guess, well, every, to keep track of their sheep and, and stuff. And it's funny that it's it's ingrained in us as, as humans because what do we do when we open up a bottle of something when you're a little kid? Mm -hmm. The first thing you're doing is blowing on it. You, you, you've seen the tricks where you put different amounts of water in and it changes the frequency. Um, and so that's that what idea. comes up next because there's a hydraulis, and this is in 250 BC in Alexandria was invented, which is like a 10 or 12 tone pan, pan flute that has water drawn 
so that the air gets pushed through the pipe. Okay. And and it's a combination of, of tuning and diff, uh, more than one tone. And so it's the, it's using air, it's compressing air, like a, like a pump system right. over a pipe and then with water. Okay. Yeah, because you see here in the pictures, originally the pipes, you just cut you, them. You, you, you make cut a long them and, and short note. And they still sell those today, the you know, the very, the pan flutes. Man, you know, dude, Peter, Peter Pan Peter has them. It sold millions of albums, sold more records than mm -hmm. Elvis and the Beatles put together. That pan flute guy, they show his, uh, I can't think of his name. Yeah. They used to have those commercials on TV. So the size of the pipe co directly correlates with the, the instrument tone. Um, and so as you, you know, as you're thinking about how these instruments started, you think about the modern ones that you've seen and you know the dissolution of them in, into a, a digital place. But. Now I haven't seen, there are pan pipes samples and on digital keyboards. I've never seen an instrument listed as a hydraulis. Oh, it will come. Okay, and I'm sure now that we're making this video, yeah. the Korg and Roland and all those guys are gonna jump right on it. And then they're gonna come out with this one here, pneumatic organ. And what this one does is it has, you can see pipes, but instead of having the water, it's got like these, looks like little kids and teenagers pumping these uh, big bellows, jumping up and down on them. And this is like... Almost like an accordion, like a pump of yeah, air. Yeah, it's like a giant uh, accordion bellows where they each have one take, you know, like kind of seesaw. And this is like up to around 395 AD. Is what so these kids here. are running around everywhere and they're like, hey, instead of jumping around over there, jump on this organ, this organ uh, pump. Yeah, no, the next through. one is positive organ, they say. And it, and it says... It was developed with grand gothic organs because it was placed in a certain position on the floor table to be played, although it could be moved, but they don't actually tell you how it made it sound. Okay, but apparently you had to use levers. It didn't really have, there's no keyboard yet. So there's no keyboard there's still. There's no keyboard yet. This? This, uh, this is in uh, 15th century. There's so no we're real in the 1400s keyboard. 1400s and there's no keyboard yet. Right. Now we get to the medieval cathedral organ and they don't show us the, 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 the keyboard. Uh, that, I guess that one would have came before this one. This thing's not in order, I don't think, because it looks like it goes this way, but medieval cathedral organ has, instead of two guys on this pneumatic organ, they got 10 guys. Pumping it. Pumping it. And now this one here, I've seen and uh, before, this is called a portative organ, portable. Okay. And, and it's like one of those where you would just pump it like this. So kind of back to the idea of carrying around a, uh, a pan flute. Right. It's, it's, it's kind of like a vertical pan flute with keys. Pipe, okay, yeah. so this one has keys. So almost like a like a, a bagpipe a little bit? It, it is. It's kind of like... You're pumping... Yeah. yeah. It's a, almost a sort of like a bagpipe, bagpipe with keys, I okay. guess. And then you have this Baroque organ. And you see they have this really cool ornate looking carved wood. They don't really talk a lot about the pipes. They don't really talk about... Um, they talk about the ornateness and how famous this organ is, and uh, they don't talk about tunings. It's just the concept of, of how organs were used in large churches to attract people from all over the place. Well, I mean, it was, and it now was, this one also has multiple sounds. Well, when you think about the, the practicality of it, it's you know the place where everyone's singing, and when voices come together, you know it's like the, the right. power of God. It's like the, the fill the whole space and, and have something that's. But what's interesting here is I wanted to, there was one in here where they tell you. This might be the one that had the pipe. There was one of the pipes that was 29 feet long. That's here, this medieval cathedral. 29 foot tall and 14 inches in diameter. So it's just about that, pure volume and that's size. That's a huge yeah. pipe. 30 foot long like that? About that big? That's a big pizza. Yeah. And so so each key, when they're hitting these, it's firing off. It's, it's controlling an individual pipe. Insane amount of wind. Yeah. I mean, an insane amount of wind. Okay, so then next we come up to, it looks like... They have contemporary, uh, romantic organ, whatever that means. Uh, chordal music replacing polyphonic music, significant additions to the organ, increased means of expressiveness and colorful solo and orchestral qualities. More pipes, uh, flutes, and what time different period is this? Uh, registers and manuals. This is, it doesn't, it's 19th century. All right, so we're okay. coming into 18th century. Uh, wait, it's all out of order. Here, mechanical organ. This is the one we had talked about before. It has more working parts in it than an organ. And this was 16th century, and then sometimes built an enormous size. They represent man's continuing endeavor to produce a musical instrument which can be played mechanically without skill or previous musical education. Greatest composers for a mechanical organ, because it's basically a programmed thing, were um, Carl Philip Emanuel Bach, I'm, I'm sure that's one of Bach's kids, Haydn, Mozart, and Beethoven wrote music especially for this kind of instrument. A, a flute playing clock kind uh -huh. of thing. Uh, then there's the romantic organ, contemporary church organ. 
Theater organ and home organ are all on the side. And so those are the three that really, when you think about an organ and the samples that we have on keyboards, it's one of these threes, right? Yeah, but you know, the problem is I'm looking down here in this fine print and it says right here, copyright. 1970 Baldwin Piano and Organ Company. Ah, because I see Cincinnati, one. Ohio, developed and published by Baldwin Piano and Organ Company as a service to music education, and then art by this uh, Dorothy Borchers did these great little watercolor pictures. And I think that's interesting because there's one organ that we're missing on this, right? Uh, actually, there's a couple. Uh, one is one electronic organ. Two would be. A spinning wheel organ known as a Hammond mm -hmm. is not in here because they both Farfisa, the transistor organ, which was made by a number of Japanese companies, certainly by 1970. And uh, some of the organ, like, for example, the one that Doors used mm -hmm. uh, in early Chicago Farfisa, used, yeah. and then almost everyone had a B3. And so you don't well, see rock and roll music. Yeah, there, there was uh, a, okay. uh, the whole electric organ sound and, and uh, that idea lives on and is very prevalent in that organ sound on but you know what i think pianos. the evolution of organ i don't think it stops with the organ right now because i think the evolution of the organ actually really literally needs to include sampling mm -hmm. because if there were a way to get a recording and play it the evolution of the, or the organ is that it is a modern day contemporary um digital instrument well so when you think about organ and its capacity to play music it's it's from, from the untrained eye, it has keys, kind of looks like a piano, maybe a digital type piano. But what is what are the fundamental differences when, a, when we, we talk about pianos a lot here, and a piano is very similar to the idea behind a guitar or a violin where it's there's strings that are being struck. Okay. I want to back up historically. I want to go back to this Hammond thing. Okay. When they first came out, there was actually a professional meeting and a compendium put together to determine if really it was an organ or not. And so I think it was in Chicago, I need to go back and recheck, but they brought in a Hammond organ with a Leslie speaker and they had it compared to a, a pipe organ in different settings in a church and they, they recorded them and it's they the played same. the same player and the sound was hardly it, you could tell the pipe organ had a different sound, but for the most part, the masses, thousands of people going to church wouldn't be able to tell the difference. But the main important difference was you could get a Hammond organ for a real affordable price compared to a pipe organ. Yeah. And so was that the idea behind electric that organs? That was the idea to try to shut down Hammond organs and by having them called organs. Early on, when they okay. first came out, there was a but, lot but of resistance I, in church sales. But the idea this. was uh, to bring something in at a lower price that was more portable. I'm guessing access to more people. And so, and then you see it's, a lot of them on stages. You see like them in rock guitars. and roll. Absolutely. Um, and so, just you know, kind of like the kind of like the electric piano, yeah. where it was, how do we translate this musical instrument that everyone loves and grows up playing? onto the stage in our rock and roll well, music. It almost invented a new style. Well, here, absolutely. And I, I told you that, you know, the 60s and 70s, particularly the 70s, was a real exciting time, both in the organ business and in uh, the digital or electric, quote unquote, piano business, because each manufacturer produced something that made its own sound. Mm -hmm. And so part of the history of, of uh, like, where we are now with digital pianos is go back and watch all the 60s and 70s real quickly videos and look at all the keyboards that the bands are using. It took a long time to get a lot of that junk off the stage and get it down to the three or four models that almost everyone agrees are the top of the line ones into a sound to where everyone has them now. Mm -hmm. And so that's a really cool development. In my lifetime, I knew guys that owned stacks of stuff and they could get any sound. It was a long time before you could get all those sounds in of usable box. quality yeah. into one. It's box. very recent. In very the last recent. ten years, really. That's why, that's why it's an exciting time to be um, a musician. And so, it, pretty pretty cool instrument, the organ. Again, I think it's it's interesting to look at the overlap between piano and organ as far as the idea behind hitting a note and it project, projecting a tone, but the functionality of it is very different. Besides what the player is is you know what the players. Uh, manual or keyboard looks like those are very similar but the actual functionality behind it changes drastically instead of a string being struck and the soundboard resonating and a lot of tension at play with multiple strings that are you know three strings to amplify the same volume as two and one in the bass right. section with a pipe organ they're different sized pipes um they're 
they're firing off a lot of wind, like you said, a lot of wind through these pipes to change the, the, the and you get this vibration through the entire building a lot of the times when you hear the pipe organ. Rattles, rattles the bones inside you. And then thinking about that to an electric piano and, and, uh, and then, you know, piano in general, they, they came at an intersection when these digital pianos were invented. And it's like, hey, this is the same, this is the same idea. We have a keyboard, we have something that has black and white notes what what is it more like and what is more You're prevalent and what lives on today i would say more is you know is it piano is it organ they're combined in the same instrument With the different manuals or registers mm -hmm. by the mid to late 70s most organ manufacturers had an option where you could get a synthesizer on top oh yeah Okay, so there was different preset mood kind of things. That's interesting and because... In one of the videos, I actually mentioned that the organ pushed so many different keyboard products and actually pushed the synthesizer into existence mm -hmm. and pushed into all these organ sounds. Well, and, and you think, I've heard this before, where the organ, the in-home organ, was it brought oh. it brought church and it brought Broadway to your home. Like A Absolutely. lot of people were able to create sounds and create full shows with just you know this thing, click on the, the accompaniment Home track, click on you know the 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 drum sets, click on all this stuff, and then you're able to play with it, and it reads kind of I'm hitting down a C, it's playing you know a rudimentary C background, and then you're able to play the melody, um, and so it's it's just interesting that organ and electric piano and piano kind of intersected and kind of formed what you're talking about since digital pianos, the idea behind making music fun. Well, what was Baldwin known for? The Fun Machine. Oh, they're one of the top selling organs of all time. I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying this was a really unique thing because they put a lot of history on there. Just forgot the biggest well, competitor. And, and, and I, I think we wanted to do this video, the evolution of the organ, not only because we found this cool poster, but because it seems like the organ, for for lack of a better word, has has died a little bit outside of anything that's not church. Um, when you think about the, the tools that digital pianos make today um, to play music, to have fun with it, some of those ideas were rooted in organ and rooted in, right. in, uh, in the different sounds that come out of it and the functionality of it and the funness of bringing music all in one place where you can enjoy sure. it. Sure, the other thing too with the organ, particularly with the Hammond organ, is that in the jazz, the R&B, and in the rock world, and the rock and roll world, and all the, the blues, everything that, that you can imagine, the one thing, the reason why the organ was always there from the 50s forward is because wherever you went for nine times out of 10, whatever piano you were relying on at the venue of the gig would not be in tune, but the organ would be. So it was always organ, driven. Yeah. It, it was all. It was in great tune. It, not like a piano that's got, well, it's good from here on up or there, and it, you can't get a tune into the gig mm -hmm. in time. The organ would be in tune. Interesting. So you don't have to tune an organ, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, so that's the evolution of the organ, or as I call it, the organ trail, and where we are today, having great organ sounds available at your fingertips, um, and you know, really has carved its way out into music, like you said, into a lot of jazz and a lot of R and B and a lot of rock and roll, um, especially in oh, its own too. Like, and gospel. Yeah, yeah, I mean, touch on church music. We completely ignored all church. No, music. I mean, it doesn't but even mention gospel none of this music. would have happened without churches. Like oh, none of the uh, none of the pipes. I, type I, I was going to mention too. The one thing about the organ is that it was designed to have music. And the liveliness of music, because even those early instruments were so out of tune, it just meant there's life and there's an event and there's something going on over there. As churches got bigger and towns got bigger, the organs got bigger to call more and more people so they could all enjoy music, mm -hmm. whether they like the church or not. They just go there and hear the sounds. And yeah, it's, it's, it, to me, it's, it's fascinating because it even... It even when you think about air and pipes, you know, you nowadays you think about like band instruments, right? And and that the just the the philosophy behind air and pipes versus string and wood, and so that's kind of but but the organs and keyboards kind of intersect on the on the playability side, but the way they attack the the frequency is very right. different. Well, thank you guys for watching. This was you know kind of a fun video to do, but this is Ted Barstool. I'm Patrick Marr. We're here in San Antonio at Alamo Music. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. Please leave comments if we left anything out. I'm sure we left out a whole bunch of organ history, but we did want to talk about the importance of organ to us and to the modern keyboard. Um, but please leave comments. We'd love to discuss and hear your thoughts on all of it. Thanks for watching.